I tweeted this on 26 January in the evening. Just looking at the box office numbers of Fighter and how dependent it was on a favorable word of mouth versus the marketing doing the trick. So I wanted to take a deep dive on several films that really got the marketing of their movies wrong, leading to abysmal box office results. It's very interesting beyond the movies and their content to notice the strategies that are employed by companies days prior to the release of the film to make people aware about what they will be signing up for. While press tours and interview junkets was somewhat of a norm to make people aware about films, the dearth of celebrity interviews today is also reflective of the cancel culture environment we live in today and which could clearly be detrimental to the box office fate of a movie. I must say there is nothing better than seeing inventive ideas being employed by production companies to promote their film or just when the cast of a movie gets along with one another. I remember so well how the promotional campaign of Eh Dil Hai Mushkil with Ranbir and Anushka was such a laugh riot. Interviews that I often revisit even today. This, this is my own. <laughs> Dr. Scott, you can see it's a medical project going on, that's why she's in that look. <laughs> <laughs> you had the best ensemble cast interactions with Akshay Kumar with movies like Mission Mangal and Good News, where Akshay is found constantly pulling someone's leg. I think one of the most inventive campaigns was actually executed by the makers of Delhi Belly, doubling down fully on being an A certificate film. In the last 20 years, the love of Mamu is going to kill everyone. Or recently with a film like Chup, where they literally made reviewers scared to give the film a star rating. While most of the promotions today are highly dependent on a solid trailer, I wanted to cover the times when promotional campaigns really sabotaged the film's ultimate fate or potential at the box office. So here is Trident Refuse Productions with 10 Bollywood movies that were promoted in the worst way possible. Selfie Having the lowest opening for an Akshay Kumar starer, the promotional campaign of Selfie was aggressive and all over the place. The official remake of a Malayalam film, Driving License, the film barely piqued the interest of viewers despite having Akshay and Imran Hashmi sharing screen space together. What made things even more weird was that an ordinary looking film had an exorbitant budget of over 100 crores and people were confused where the investment was made. The music video used for promotions also were not reflective of the content of the film and were licensed to play DMF, some music videos being so atrocious that they didn't even feature in the movie. I dare you to see the Honey Singh song Kudi Chamkili, it looks like a literal parody. The interviews given by Karan Johar regarding the promotion of movies made it pretty clear why he was adamant in doing so many city tours with this film and why they had the horrible idea as promotion to get a Guinness World Record of the most number of selfies in a record time. No one cared. I think if anybody's really clever enough and tunes into me and how I'm marketing the movie, you'll know whether I like it or not. And I'll tell you why. Because the films that I really love, I don't go into overdrive. I go into overdrive and I'm fearing something. <laughs> so Bhavish Joshi Superhero One of the most underrated films of the superhero genre, Bhavish Joshi Superhero, is everything that we as film fans wanted an origin story to be like. Unique, stylized, gritty and most importantly, original. The film and its ultimate fate at the box office in retrospect will break any film fan's heart as Viridi Wedding, which shared the same release date, eventually became the box office hit. Bhavish Joshi, however, was terribly marketed. The first trailer was cut almost as an absurdist social commentary on the superhero genre itself. It was too self-aware for anyone's liking. The dramatic themes of the film were not even slightly hinted at. Insaf as a slogan was confusing more than effective. What made it worse was a promotional music video for the film being released called Chaman Prash featuring Arjun Kapoor which had nothing to do with the film and actually made people confused about what the movie is about. Motwane reflects on the same and has an interesting take on how he would have wanted to create the movie today. I think Bhavesh should have been a woman. I think mm. Sikhu's character should have been a woman's character. Himmatwala if there is a red flag that one should immediately be aware of during the promotions of a movie, it is when the director claims to have made a masterpiece. 
when you drink the delusional Kool-Aid of believing your own hype and announcing it to the public, you know the journey will hit a brick wall anytime. This is what worried me when Abhijat Joshi had announced that Dunkey is Rajkumar Hirani's best film of his career. But nothing was more irritating than seeing Sajid Khan gloat during the promotional campaign of Himmatwala, overconfident to the point of announcing the film to be a blockbuster even before the release. It'll be amongst the top three hits of 2013 and uh, it's an open challenge to anybody. Even praising his own writing, claiming it to be superior to the original. Meri himmat wala ke do, jo dialogues Sajid Farad ne likhe hain, wo dialogues shayad Kadar Khan sahab ke himmat wala se thode upar hain. Achha. Faridun's iconic Achha aside, Sajid reflected on the delusion that had gone on an overdrive mode during the same time. And during himmat wala I was just on a rampage shooting my mouth off. Today when I revisit some of those interviews, good lord, I wish I had a time machine to go back, not change the script of the film, but at least put a zip on my mouth at that time, you know. Chapak. Deepika Padukone's first film as a producer focused on the real-life story of acid attack survivor Lakshmi Agarwal. The film had everything going for it. Deepika is the lead, a heartbreaking yet inspirational true story, a bona fide talent like Vikrant Massey and Meghna Gulzar directing it. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the marketing push before the release proved to be detrimental for the film's ultimate fate at the box office. The real headline grabber was when Deepika stood in solidarity with the students of JNU during the height of the CAA protests. While everyone is free to politically express themselves, the polarizing atmosphere and her presence in the gathering took away from the content of the film and its quality. And all that people spoke about was her political stance. This negated the otherwise admirable attempt on the screen with the film, reflecting directly on the discourse and financial performance of the film. Meghna Gulzar was very candid about this and the adverse impact it had on the film during the promotions of Sam Bahadur. Yes, it did make a dent on the film because the conversation went from acid violence, which I intended the film to amplify, uh, and went somewhere else. So, of course, it impacted the film. Badhai do. The marketing of this film had done a terrible job to highlight the theme and overall message of the movie. I'll be honest, when I saw the trailer of the film, I wondered what's the need of another film in the same genre as Shubh Mangal Zyada Sabdhan. In the process of inclusivity and representation, I wondered, are we just missing the point by producing one generic product after the other? It was only after watching the film that I realized that the film shed light on marginalized sections of society with a commercial lens like no other movie. It did what Ek Ladki Ko Dekha could not do. It did not sugarcoat the problems it wanted to explore. It brought up necessary conversations and sequences you wouldn't even imagine in the commercial space in India. So while the trailer gave out the notion that this is just another North Indian small town story with a social message, it was so much more than that. And I only got to know that after stepping out of the theatre. The trailer really let this film down and it could have easily reached a larger audience. It's their coming of age, you know, it is their acceptance. And as Raj rightly said, there's so much that happens in the film and there's so much that the trailer does not say. Shikara. I think speaking of advertising, exactly what audiences will be signing up for is where Shikara really faltered. The untold story of Kashmiri Pandits was how the film was marketed and it made people assume that the film will focus on the horrors of a peace-loving community banished from their own land and state. But the film was a love story set in the same backdrop. It was this expectation versus reality that really enraged a section of the audience who felt shortchanged as the marketing of the film promised otherwise. The gritty horrors of a community getting uprooted was what people signed up for, but what they got was a romantic tragedy. Jagga Jasus If one is a fan of drama, if one wants to be a fly in the wall and eavesdrop on conversations and get the tea, then the promotions of Jagga Jasus were a feast. The animosity between the leads during the promotion of the film could be cut with a knife. The banter shared between the actors would often translate into straight up arguments or awkward moments. I was doing expressions, variations, and everything. There is no gratefulness that you have showed about this and you've become this. Clearly denoting that there is tension in the room. The constant delays of the film did not help the case. And while the film had an absolutely solid trailer, one could only talk about the pair parting ways and it presumably being a key contributor to the film being in limbo. She treats him like a kid, like he knows nothing. 
he is also and very life, amused he by her. me like a kid like I know nothing because he won't and let me finish my sentences people were less interested in the film and exploring the wacky brainchild of Anurag Basu but more interested in seeing whether the duo will eventually start wrestling in one of their interviews did you see tamasha no hey edel hai mushkil tumhe tamasha kyun nahi lagi I don't know. You just didn't like it. You didn't want to see it. <laughs> What? Okay. Have some coffee. <laughs> Dobara, a movie that just came and vanished from the theaters, was a film titled Dobara, directed by Anurag Kashyap and starring Tapsi Pannu. This movie was released at the height of the boycott Bollywood movement, and where the fate of most of the Hindi films was to, within a few days, declare them as a flop or a disaster. Both the actor and director, however, took an absurd decision during the interviews to take on the boycott gang by requesting them to boycott their film. आजकल तो ऐसा लग रहा है हमारी पिक्चर अगर boycott नहीं करी तो will feel out of place. So please. बॉयकॉट करते ना ना हमारे पिक्चर भी करना थोड़ी अ मूव इन माय ओपिनियन व्हिच मेड नो सेंस आई गेट दैट इट वाज सेट इन जस्ट बट द फिल्म केम एंड वैनिश्ड इन थिन एयर जस्ट लाइक दे विश्ड एंड जोक्ड अबाउट तू झूठी मैं मक्कार इफ अ रोमांटिक कॉमेडी इज स्पेशली बीइंग मार्केटेड एवरीवन लुक्स फॉरवर्ड टू द प्रमोशनल कैंपेन एंड सीइंग द डुओ इंटरैक्ट विद द मीडिया व्हेन रणबीर एंड श्रद्धा वर पेयर्ड इन तू झूठी मैं मक्कार पीपल वर एक्चुअली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हाउ दे गॉट अलोंग ड्यूरिंग द शूटिंग ऑफ द फिल्म दिस डायनामिक वाज अनएक्सप्लोर्ड लव रंजन वाज ऑफ द नोशन दैट इफ द पेयर वाज टू बी सीन टुगेदर इट विल बी ओनली फॉर द थिएटर्स एंड नॉट फॉर एनी प्रमोशनल कैंपेन ये भैया डिसीजन मेरा है कि ये जोड़ी जो पहली बार आ रही है ये अगर देखनी है तो थिएटर में दिखेगी ये साथ में थिएटर के बाहर नहीं दिखेगी an odd marketing strategy to employ while the film had everything going for it a great album a solid trailer and just fun vibes the distance between them on their own trailer launch event is the most awkward stuff i have seen i wonder if there was more to it acha tamasha Just coming out of the success of Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, Ranbir Kapoor and Deepika Padukone were the it pair of the 2010s that everyone was excited to see on the big screen. So when they were featuring in an Imtiaz Ali movie, the perception had been set amongst the audience that the pair might be featuring in another romantic comedy together. The trailer of the film packed in most of the meet cute sequences from Corsica. The depth and journey of self exploration of Ved was hinted at but was vague. And more importantly, the prom- emotional interviews showcased more of a pair just sharing a cute dynamic with one another and what was lacking was that the discourse or the discussions with interviewers never seemed to dwell deep on the themes of the film hi ranbir uh, hi katrina we see me here from india news uh sorry deepika i'm really sorry <laughs> the expectation versus what the film had created there was a huge divide amongst audiences resulting in an abysmal run at the box office and only years later for people like you and me to explore appreciate and celebrate the gem that it is and that was a video guys write down in the comments below of which bollywood movie you think had the worst promotional strategy please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching